Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 14 beta 8 has been out to developers and iOS 14 public beta 8 has been out for a couple days as well. And I want to talk about more new features that were found in this particular update. Not that I just found, but some of you as well. Now, also I want to talk about iOS 14 GM and when to expect iOS 14, the public version, as well as what to expect at the event on Tuesday, whether that be iPhone 12 or more. So I'll cover that toward the end of the video. Now, the first new feature is finally here. It's something we were promised from the beginning and that is default browsers. So you can change your default browser by going to settings and maybe you want to use Chrome, for example, as long as the app maker has updated their app, you can do this. So if you go to Chrome, for example, you'll see, we now set, we now have a default browser app. And so it says Safari, we can change it to Chrome. So it's up to you what you want to use. Now keep in mind, default browsers on iOS are basically reskinned versions of Safari. Apple only allows WebKit, which is their browser for security reasons. So Chrome is just a reskinned version of Safari, basically same with Firefox and the others. Now they may change this in the future, but that's currently how it's set up. Also, we should see this come out to email clients soon as well. So if we go down to Gmail, for example, you'll see there's sort of a setting here that's not there. So it looks like they're going to update this soon and we should be able to see it. I tried different email apps from spike to spark to outlook and none of them are there. So, and Hey, you'll see here, all of these different email apps. I tried them out and none of them have default settings set up yet for that. So hopefully we'll see that pretty soon. You'll see here's outlook. It's just not there. So they need to update their app to allow that. And then we'll see it now in the contact app. There's something very minor that's due, but let's go into that. Now, if we go into contacts on both phones on my iPhone 10 R on my left here, I have iOS 14 beta seven and I have iOS 14 beta eight on the 11 pro max. And as you can see on the right, right here where the phone is or the the actual phone icon, it says call on beta seven. It says work. So they've changed it. It's not a big change, but work and then call. Now, the first time you open this, it will actually say work on beta eight, and then it will switch to call. So it's a small update. It's very minor, but someone noticed that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So if I close it out, go back in and you'll see now it says work and then it switched to call. It's very fast and it's just something that's new not anything really incredible, but something that's different. Now you can use shortcuts with bedtime and there's some interesting options here. So if we go into shortcuts and then maybe I want to scroll down, let me find maybe turn Bluetooth off. When I go to bed, I want to use that shortcut. We can go to our shortcut options go to our options here and you'll see it says show in sleep mode. This is not here on iOS 14 beta seven. You'll see on beta seven, it's not there. So you'll see it says show in sleep mode. And then what we can do is on our iOS 14 beta eight device, we'll turn it into sleep mode by tapping the little bed here, go to the lock screen, turn it back on and you'll see that we actually have shortcuts tap on the shortcuts. And now we have the option to turn Bluetooth off when it's there. So we just press and hold that the seal shared this with me, one of the viewers of this channel. So I really appreciate that. And so he helped me out, found that I thought it was really great. You can actually use it with everything from Wi-Fi to all your other shortcuts as well. It's sort of there. If you have multiple devices, you enable it on one, it will kind of carry over to your other device. So it will show up over here now on beta seven. So if I go here, you'll see I'm already in sleep mode, turn the screen off, turn it back on, go to shortcuts. You'll see it's there. So it's in the code. It's just not physically there in the shortcuts app. So they changed it a little bit. So it works properly on the beta eight devices. So it's kind of neat that it's there. Now, another new thing is maybe we connect our AirPods or you connect power beats pro to your phone. You'll see all of a sudden your airplay icon will start to blink. It doesn't do this in beta seven. So you'll see it's just blinking there. It just stays solid in beta seven. So it's a small physical change, but I thought it was kind of nice looking. And so it's there. Now you may have noticed if you watched my previous video on what was new with beta eight, that going into jiggle mode, for example, so maybe we'll just go into jiggle mode here. We'll hold settings. And when I canceled that before I had to press done. Now I can just swipe up a reboot actually fixed that. In fact, when I opened an app, it would slide in from the right. It was kind of a weird animation going on. It's almost like your animations were turned off and you had to physically press buttons. A reboot actually solved that problem. So I'm not sure what that was possibly a bug. 
and so it's not happening anymore, but it was when I first installed beta eight. Now, also, as far as new features, this is very minor, but if you have a phone with multiple lenses, maybe you switch to the second one and you drag the haptic feedback is a little bit different here. It still had it before if you did this, but previously the haptic feedback when scrolling through the wheel, changing focal distances was actually a little bit different. So they've updated that maybe made it a little less prominent. So you feel it a little bit less, but it is something that has been updated. It seems now under widgets, I noticed something with the news widget. So if I scroll down, you'll see that I have the huge news widget still on the 11 pro max. There's an interesting behavior I've noticed. So let's go ahead and try and add another one. So if I go into news here, we'll go down to news, for example, and then scroll over, you'll see that I don't have the large news widget. However, if I go back and then I delete the large news widget, then I go to add it again under news, you'll see that it's returned. So if I add it, it disappears from being able to add a second one. That's a behavior I noticed that's a little bit new. Now, finally, a feature that was promised with iOS 14 when they first announced it is finally here if you use Apple CarPlay. And what that is, is thanks to Matthew McCarthy for pointing this out. But if you're using Apple CarPlay and you use the home screen, you can now use Google Maps with it instead of Apple Maps. So as you can see here, this is what it looks like. And it doesn't currently work with Waze, but it works with Apple Maps and Google Maps. So if you have that, you can have it on the home screen. Previously, you actually could only open it full screen. You couldn't just have it on the home screen also. Now this may have been here in previous betas, but no one seemed to point it out. So if it's been there before, let me know in the comments below, but it seems to be new in beta eight. So let me know what you think of it. If you're using it already, I'd love to hear from you. Now there's a couple things I get asked regularly. Can we still have a blank home page? And yes, actually you can. So on the iPhone 11, I'll just demonstrate how you do this. So press and hold on an app, maybe the camera, go into jiggle mode, keep holding move the app slightly and then just tap all of your different apps. So I guess we'll just carry these all across here. And then this will just bring all these in with us. So I'll keep tapping here. Once you have all of your apps, drag them to the next screen, maybe put them down here. Now let's drag them over here. So we'll put them on this screen. And now we have a blank home page. swipe up and it locks it in. So now you can have a blank home screen. If you want to, you still can in previous betas, it didn't work. Now it's working again. So if you want to enjoy the wallpaper, you can do that now. Now I wanted to clear one thing up as far as a feature that's in iOS 14, and that is the translate feature within Safari. So maybe you're on a web page that's not in your native language and you want to be able to read it. Well, you tap on the double A's here, translate to your language or translate to English in my case, and it translates the web page and it works really well. Now, if you're not seeing this, this seems to be only available in the United States. So as long as you're in the United States, it should work. It may work in other places as well, but the person I was talking to that wasn't seeing it was in the UK. So I just wanted to clarify that if you're not seeing that, hopefully they roll that out in the future by the time it's released, but at least in the beta, it's only working. It seems like in the United States, let me know if it's working for you though, in the comments below. Now we're still waiting for spatial audio. I get asked when is spatial audio coming? Is it working while the setting is still there? Currently it doesn't seem to be working. So we're waiting for Apple to update it and maybe we'll see that update with iOS 14 GM and with GM, I would expect it after the event on Tuesday. So if we go into the calendar here on Tuesday, we have that Apple event on the 15th and that's at 1 PM Eastern time. And so after that, we should see iOS 14 GM. I would also expect them to announce the final release date of iOS 14 that day, which I would expect probably on the week of the 20th. I've said this before, it could be later, but I would expect it then. And who knows what Apple will do? Maybe they'll roll it out then it could be later, but usually that's how they do it. So expect them to roll out iOS 14 GM on the 15th and then a final version the following week. That's usually how Apple does it. So as far as that goes, then we'll see spatial audio. Maybe we'll see an AirPods firmware update. And at that Apple event, originally many people were saying we won't see an iPhone 12 launch. However, on the YouTube channel from Apple, they've actually started deleting iPhone 11 videos. And I don't think they would do that unless they were going to show iPhone 12. So maybe some of the sources are wrong this time. Those who normally have pretty reliable sources, of course, we'll have to wait and see, but in the past, we've seen new iPhones. We've seen new Apple watches along with 
the next version and maybe lower prices for the older ones or replacements as well as new iPads. So it's a two hour long event. Maybe we'll see it. I really hope we see iPhones is it would be nice to see it right away, but let me know what you think will happen in the comments below. Now, of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.